hey, potential be a pretty damn good match here. Huh? We got some workers, yeah. Yeah. How come uh how come fans aren't like this anymore? What do you mean? They the, the fan it's it, it's a never ending theme, I guess, on our on our you just don't have the abundance of signs and the fans standing up and reacting like this anymore. You just have fans just thinking, Oh, I'm part of the show, so I just where have we gone? I, I mean I, I I don't I just, want anybody sitting in front of me with a poster. Nobody well, does. Nobody does. Wow, I knew this, man. So Somebody I guess I should tell everybody me. that um, you and I have talked about a, a musical bit that you're going to be putting together. Mm. Yeah. Are you excited right. about it? I mean, it's a hip-hop I, yeah. song. I guess I can give a spoiler. I don't give too much, but... It's okay. a hip hop song and one you were not familiar with before I, I sort of pitched it today as we began, right before we started rolling. Exactly. And we're going to put it together. And if you're a member of Patreon, you'll probably hear it. He, do, he doesn't sound excited about it. No, but you know what? He wasn't excited about Raven's mom when I pitched it either. But then he had a lot of fun when it was done. Well, it's over. It's over like Rover now. Yeah. And you pitched, uh, it's baby. It's cold outside for me and Lois. And we did that. Remember you don't want to pitch that. So you're the idea man here. You're the idea. Guy. Well, I got an idea. Why don't you try to give us some real commentary on Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit here Two of the all time best in ring performers. Obviously one is persona non grata. Nobody really talks about it anymore for very understandable and clear reasons. And the other still hanging around doing some on air stuff for WWE and Kurt Angle, the First gold medalist in WWE history. You know, give us some real play-by-play here. Tony Schiavone, along with Conrad Thompson, Cassio Kid, we're coming to you from uh, the Astrodome at WrestleMania 17. Pickup by Kurt Angle, and he's got him into a, a waist lock, turned over by Benoit, trying to hit. So look at that great set out, and now do a front chancery side headlock, trying to keep him off. He's trying to just keep him off onto the mat. Boy, look at this, just. As Jim Ross would say, catch is catch can wrestling. One, two. Good shot of the, what it takes to be a great amateur wrestler. And you know, Cassio, I think you would agree with me. A great amateur wrestler sometimes doesn't make the great transition to pro wrestling, but I think Kurt Angle is doing that. Uh, he's done it well. Cassio for that, uh, uh, Conrad, what do you think? I think that, uh, Kurt angle is probably the most natural professional wrestler in the history of wrestling. And we've seen recently, you know, the, the rise of Ronda Rousey and a lot of people draw those comparisons and say, we haven't seen someone this natural at this since Kurt angle. And whenever I would talk to Bruce Pritchard, he would say that his brother, Tom would say immediately day one of quote unquote wrestling school back when they did the dojos and camps at tracks and Stanford that he was attacking the mat. And that's something that, uh, you probably don't have an instinct for if you're an amateur wrestler, right? Tony, you're taught to never be on your back. I would agree. Never use history of professional wrestling. Again, that's my line. Thank you very much, Conrad Ooh. for that. And back up here comes uh Kurt angle, man. I don't know if he's blown up here or not at Casio. They're back to a vertical base, right? Once again, wouldn't you agree? What's a front chancery? Okay. <laughs> it's the opposite of reverse chancery. Okay. Mm. It's uh oh, it's it's the move you did on your honeymoon with Judy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a chancery? Well she no, said she said, Cassio, you know you're bigger than the other boys I've been with, but yeah. I'm gonna let you I'm gonna I'm gonna take a front chancery <laughs> here. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> she passed out. I hope I don't smile. That was, she took a chance, she regrets. See, you asked you asked me to do commentary and then you shit all over it. <laughs> I, no, in fairness. I never heard that before. You shit on both of us a little bit. <laughs> I gave a real answer and you said, that's my line. Well, all right. Let, I hope, I hope we have another front chancery here soon. Without question. <laughs> oh, wow. Right, hey, can we ask a question? Are you ever going to call wrestling again? Or is this the only place we're ever going to hear it? Uh, well, I don't know. It works into my schedule. I'm a very busy guy. Oh yeah. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> When, when I said, Hey, my plane lands at this time. What time can you, and he said, I'm not doing anything today. I'm available all day. Anytime's fine. 
<laughs> See? How, so here's run a wrestling event on Sunday. I'll be there. I love you. Hey, so uh, let's smarten up Cassio here. Mm-hmm. Um, Lois has been doing DDP yoga and she's yeah. dropped some LBs and she's looking good and feeling good. And she had a new outfit on at pop pop's birthday. Like she liked it. She was dressed yeah. to the nines. Right. I gave her a big hug and complimented her, but I, I used a line that I don't mm-hmm. think she knew how to take, but Tony immediately started laughing. I thought it was hilarious. Okay. And I, I said, oh my gosh, you look so great. I, I mean, I hope you feel half as good as you look. Cause you know, she had a little health scare and wasn't feeling good. And she's like, no, I feel good. And I said, well, I love your outfit. You're, you're dressed to the nines today. You look like you could host the view. Host the view. She did not think that was funny. No, she stared at Conrad for quite a while. Yeah. No blinking. She's not a fan. As no. I can gather from uh, previous pods. Uh, sure. Right. Right. Well, I mean, I knew that when I said it. Right. But yeah. the idea was this is a TV ready outfit right here. Right. Right. But she and you got stank eye. Bad. Yeah. A lot. Unless Which is obvious. Which is obviously what you're going for because you just love to give people shit. I mean, if, if that, if there is one common denominator, anybody that knows you and loves you, Hey, this guy loves to give you shit and he's better at it than anybody else. One, two. And of course I loved it. I laughed. Ha ha ha. I love to see you at the table with Whoopi Goldberg. Ha 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 ha. Shit like that. And she didn't. <laughs> she didn't. Did she talk to you the rest of the night, Conrad? Yeah, yeah. Well, we were great. I mean, she got 38 hugs and 19 pictures. We were good. <laughs> Did you see how excited? I mean, wet panty excited Whoa. to see Todd Gurley she was. I didn't think we were going to talk about that. I mean, she was like, there's Todd Gurley's here. Todd Gurley. I said, yeah. And let me, let me just wet give you a spoiler. Let me just give you a spoiler here. Okay. Uh, all of Tony's dildos are black. <laughs> no, deep purple and red for the bulldogs. Okay. Oh, got it. All That's right. what the fuck. What? And okay. now she got a new yellow one. Doesn't he play for the Rams? <laughs> Does he? I didn't yep. realize that he's, yep. he's, he's a Ram. That's why he <laughs> sees that yellow mm. earlier. Okay. Mm. Anyway, she was really excited. No, she was. I mean, she told me seven times, Todd Gurley's here. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is Charles Barkley. So is Dennis Rodman. So is Ron Gant. I, I would have popped at Ron Gant. I did. Yeah. I popped at Ron Gant. I was 10 years old again. Yeah. I was about to yeah. say, I would have been like a kid. That was awesome. What's weird though, is I didn't know it was Ron Gant. Somebody had to tell me it was Ron Gant. Cause I'm like, unless he has his hat and uniform on, like, I don't know that I know what Ron Gant looks like. So I may have been really excited to meet a guy and I called him Ron Gant and he might not actually be Ron Gant. <laughs> but like hey. t- even Terry Pendleton, if he didn't have like the shin protector on, I don't fucking think that's him. Y'all <laughs> might not be. It was cool though, man. It, you know, the Mr. Crockett was there. David Manning was there. Lots of, uh, names from wrestling yesteryear, including his best opponent ever, Ricky Steamboat. And Joe Gomez was there <laughs> and apparently I hadn't seen Joe Gomez in like, I don't know, 25 years. And apparently in those 25 years, Joe is spending his time sucking on an air hose. Whoa. Oh, cause my, I didn't even recognize him. Whoa. Didn't even recognize Joe Gomez. And I said, are you sure you're Joe Gomez? I wouldn't he recognize said, yes. Joe, Joe Gomez and, if he walked in here. Uh, well you wouldn't now. And I said, there's only one way that you can prove to me that you're Joe Gomez. He said, how's that? I said, get up to do a spot and fall down and bust your ass. And, and he said, he? no, I don't think I'll do that. So you're just walking around low key shitting on everybody there. <laughs> no. Uh, Joe, Joe is really one of the nice guys and a longtime friend of Ric Flair's. And Hey, did you happen to hear any compliments for triple H while you were there? <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you talking about the, uh, the, uh, 20 minute, uh, Ric Flair, uh, discussion he had about how much he loved triple H. No, I, I just, okay. I know you came over that one time and you said, God damn, I'm going to throw up. I've heard a half hour of fucking kissing triple H's <laughs> ass. If he stops short, Rick's going to know what he had for breakfast. I'm going to the bar or something like that. <laughs> you, you, know, you know, the thing about it is can't, uh, uh, Cassio, you can't tell Conrad shit. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> it's going to come right back out on you. Now, here's the best part, though. Then, like, two hours later, he's all giddy because Triple H introduced himself to him. <laughs> <laughs> he knows my name. 
<laughs> he might actually return a call now. <laughs> might actually return a call. Uh, seriously, he was like Conrad. He came over and said hello to me. This is the greatest night in the history of our great sport. <laughs> Oh, it's just hilarious that triple H has that effect on people where, you know, even Chris Jericho wanted a picture with triple H. And then when, when Rick got the mic, he had to say, you know, Hey man, how much I appreciate triple H and Tony's like, look at everybody just running around here, kissing triple H's ass. But then the minute he spoke to him, he's like, Oh my God, he spoke to me. Look, it moved. I didn't even need blue chew this time. I mean, seriously, the rest of the day, like the rest of the evening, like another hour, whenever you were near Tony, he'd be, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, are you humming triple H's theme song? Mind your business. Damn it. I'm looking at new cars. Hey, do me I'm a favor, Connor. At new cars. You're, you're looking at new cars. Would you throw up in one again? Oh, leg takedown crap, mm. calf crusher. I wasn't looking at new cars. You were on your phone because you were uh, already like triple H knows my name. I'm fixing to get the call, baby. <laughs> I mean, I heard because you, you knew on Friday before everybody else did about Brucey and you're like, I'm fucking next triple H knows my goddamn name. I'm out of here. <laughs> Honey, no more RoboCop for us. <laughs> this podcast thing is over. Oh, uh, do me a favor. Just would you hum triple H's song again? <laughs> That was just too good. Go ahead. No, I'm good. Thanks. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. 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 That's a big event when the two, one and two most famous son-in-laws ever are in the same room. It's same oh, room. I would agree. And not only that, Shane McMahon was there too. We didn't mention that. Say, Shane, the sh- yeah. We buried the lead. Shane oh. was there. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny because everybody's sort of like hiding out and trying to make it a surprise. But as soon as I walk in the building, there's like the WWE head of security chilling. And I'm like, man, you can't stand right here. Everybody's going to know, like <laughs> you're gonna have to move a little bit, <laughs> but yeah, it was a, it was a star studded affair. Edge was there. Jeff Hardy was there. AJ Styles was there, you know, lots of, uh, names from music and sports and professional wrestling. It's pretty cool. Crippler cross face applied and, uh, Angle is tapped out, but no referee able to see it. Meanwhile, we've been doing a lot of yuck yuck in here, and this has been a hell of a match. Well, but you know, here's the deal. There's no way we can really do a good match like this justice. No, you know, you're right. My, our show is based on let's make fun of the bad shit, but when something's really good, you just gotta let it stand on its own. And there's a lot of people who aren't able to really enjoy a Chris Benoit match, and I get it, and I don't pass judgment one way or another. But you've got two of arguably the biggest motors in professional wrestling history where it's just nonstop action, bell to bell, hard hitting, great stuff yeah. from Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle. And oddly enough, we have three of the biggest motor mouse in professional wrestling history on this podcast <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> and to the top. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, he caught him with a knee. Hey, Tony, I, uh, I meant to tell you something. Cassio got me a lovely present and it's something I think you would enjoy. And I think we're going to need to get you one, uh, so you can sort of share in the fun. Just re-gift it. What, well, no, what, no, what, I'm what? keeping this. You, you uh, need, you need, a, you need your own. All right. What is it? Uh, they're cocaine sunglasses. <laughs> what the fuck? <sighs> you know, those, you know, those shades that Arn Anderson used to wear on TBS back in the day. Who wore them on TBS back in the day? Uh, Marty good? Lundy, your friend. Oh yes. Right. Okay. Well, I have an almost identical pair now. Right. And, and they're called cocaine sunglasses. Well, Cassio yeah. gave them to me and said, Hey man, these are your cocaine shades. And I'm like, what? And he's like, well, with these on, you look like you need one of Bruce Pritchard shirts and like laying around South beach and you got a little baggie in your pocket. And <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't know what that means. But then when I opened it up, I was like, wait a minute, these are enforcer shades. And I think me and you need to have some of these. So when we're strutting that ass around Chicago next month with Eric Bischoff, we could have some Rick Ross, Arn Anderson shades on. All right. Cassio, get me a pair. Done. Thank you. Done. All right. Hey, are we going to talk about the fact that, uh, your close personal friend made some headlines this past week? Yeah. Uh, Arn Anderson, uh, no longer working for the WWE. You- I immediately, when I found out about it, sent him a, uh, 
a text which he did not answer. And then I looked on the on his number, and I'm thinking, well, it's a 203 number, so maybe now he's no longer with them. They confiscated his cell phone as well. So I sure would like to get in touch with him. Do you know, Conrad, if they confiscated his cell phone? No, I texted him. He got right back with me. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the fucker. Yeah, that's the way right it is. The they got show. money about. Okay. Whoa, there, <laughs> oh, hey, there's, look, there's the next president, president of the United States, Kamala. 